you said you try to avenge your brother's death? So my brother Christopher, so once my brother died, um, you know, we there's the there's the death, and then there's the going in the back to see his body to confirm that he's actually dead because I was very angry. Um, I was angry because one, um, I couldn't let my boyfriend comfort me because nobody knows we're together. Mm -hmm. Then I wasn't in a relationship with my girl at the time. My father was, my whole family had come to, not my whole family, but most of my family had come to the hospital at that point. And everybody was crying and whatever, but I just could not let anybody touch me because I was still trying to really process all the feelings. There was pain, there was rage, and I won't lie, if I, if I, I would be lying if I didn't say that there were a lot of people I wanted to die. Right then, there was the list, because my brother had told me a couple of weeks before, all these people that were trying them, this person's doing this, this person's meddling in this and that or whatever. And and I said to myself, like, yo, like, I, I was processing all these thoughts of what, what we should do. So my brother Chris comes to me and he says, hey, like, these guys try to rob him, or they robbed him, uh, you know, um, a week before. I'm like, well, who? And he tells me these guys are on Rosemary Lane and so forth. And so I call up my friends. And my friends, to this day, I ain't going to say their names. One was in the military. Another person was just a regular guy. And then my brother-in-law. Uh, and I call them up and I, and I say, hey, I need you guys to come to my house. We better go do something. So they, you know, my friends were, whatever you want to do, they ride for me. So when they got there, I tell them what we're going to do. We're going to go to this house. We're going to kill everybody in this apartment. And so... We all got the guns. We all handed the guns out and uh, the hoodies and the mask or whatever. And and I remember this is the stupidest thing. Like, this is how people get caught doing stupid shit because they don't think about it. We literally put on masks and hoodies. It was in the evening, but in a building where it was like extremely lit in the hallway, we just walked up with these guns and knocked on the door and pointed the guns. And in my mind, you know, on my brother's life, I just remember thinking like, whoever opens the door, it could be a kid, it could be a mother, it could be a grandmother, it could be a whoever, whoever opens this door, we're just gonna shoot everybody in there. Because at that point, I didn't really feel like there was any purpose of living at that point. I had lost the most important person to me. Uh, this person believed in me. So yeah, I mean, we we felt like we're gonna go in there, we're just gonna kill everybody. I thank God. That's why when I wrote the book, God must have forgotten about me, when I talk about it in the book. It was a fitting title for all the experiences, but when I look back, God did. God was there that day because my whole life would have changed if that if they would open that door. Thank God nobody opened the door. <sighs> okay. Well, the shooter got twenty two years in prison. Yes, that was the female. She's a female. Yeah. Okay. Were you a uh, part of the trial? I was a part of the trial. Okay. Yeah. When you heard about the twenty two years, was it any level of closure? No. No. Because. Um, I wanted her dead too, you know. Um, I'm I'm not a person that says, "Well, just gotta forgive thy enemies." That's good for the Bible. That's not how I felt. Yeah, you know, um, when you have somebody who's had so much loss and despair and dysfunction in their life, mothers on drugs, mothers out, fathers not there, molested, shot. This at some point you like, damn, like, can I get a break? So for me, it was okay. You know, and there were different people trying to get at her in prison and do things to her. And I wasn't a part of that. I know a lot of trauma happened to the, her boyfriend whose gun it was that she used. Like they had beat him, almost killed him a couple of times, was, stomped his eye out of socket. I remember calling him, calling me and then begging me to have the community stop. And I remember calling some of the shot callers like, hey, can y'all just like ease off of this dude? Because I don't know that he had anything to do with it. And they were like, nah, this ain't got nothing to do with you, you know, and they weren't giving him any passes and they were trying to kill him. So. Um, when she got 22 years, I felt like it was a disservice because I know a lot of men, black men who get more prison than life for three strikes at the time for drug offenses are stealing pizza and shit. And this person stole a whole life. My brother had just had his first child who was six or seven weeks old. Um, and he was very proud to be a father. He was changing his life. Um, yeah. So no, 22 years wasn't enough. 